All right, so my name is Stephanie, and I'm here to talk to you about one of my favorite Angular libraries right now, which is Angular Material. So you can follow me on Twitter at Stephanie Fluin. If you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out to me. Otherwise, uh, if you want to catch me later as well, I'll be posting the slides later today for this talk. So a little bit about myself. I primarily started out in business, uh, my, my career, and then two years ago I moved from Minnesota, which is wickedly cold, to California, which I love because there's lots of sun and palm trees. But I essentially started my consulting career then um, doing design. So a lot of my clients were asking me, okay, great, you know, these, this looks awesome, but can you build it? Can you prototype it? Can you build the application or website that you're designing for me? And I would constantly have to say, no, sorry, I, I, I don't know how. So that prompted me to go to coding boot camp. So I did, and that's where I fell in love with front-end development and Angular in particular. I then had the opportunity to work with the Angular team to help them redesign and implement those design changes to their Angular documentation website, angular.io. Um, so you might see me there, uh, know me from that, which is a lot of fun. So today I want to cover a couple things. First, I want to talk about what Angular or what material design is, which is the foundation of what Angular material is based on. I want to go into Angular material touch base a little bit on the CDK and what that is, and then finally go into what I think are the top five most underappreciated uh, components in the Angular library. So what is material design? Uh, material design was created by Google. It's a set of specification standard principles um, that essentially a visual language for how you design. This includes things like iconography, sizing, animations, fonts, and then another major component, which is kind of what they're notorious for, which is their material palette. Um, and there's a, there's a pairing theory that they have where they have two colors. One is the primary color, and the other one is the accent color to help them help a user understand your application and how to interact with it better. So you'll see this used um, in the Angular Material Library. So this is kind of an example of what it would look like in real life. I'm sure you've seen an Angular Material application. You can see that the iconography is very consistent, similar. There's buttons, there's a toolbar, the fonts, et cetera. Um, you'll, you've seen it. Um, so Angular Material is essentially a library developed by the Angular team um, to provide developers with high quality component uh, UI, UI components, sorry. And they're very reliable. It's tested across several browsers, which is why I love it so much. And another thing that the team has accessibility at top of mind. So if you have users that are using screen readers or any sort of alternative technology, um, they're kind of putting that up front and they're doing all the heavy lifting for you so you don't have to really think about it much. So why would you use uh, Angular Material Library? Obviously, if your application is going to use material design 100%, then yes, by all means, use the, the library. Another great uh, place to use it is for internal tools. Um, that Firebase app was an awesome example. It was just really beautiful, really quick to use, um, and, and great, great library to use for things like that. Um, and then essentially, if you want to do any, any quick and fast prototype that you need to just whip up that looks great and amazing, um, again, another great place to use a library. So Angular Material, the library, is built on top of the CDK. So the CDK is a separate library altogether, and it is broken down into common behaviors and components. Uh, the CDK is what allows you to build your own custom component UI library, if that's something that you want to do. Um, and then within Angular Material, you have the components themselves that fall into one of those two CDK buckets, um, and then also the ability to do some theming. And so with theming, you have the option of um, doing multi-theme. Um, you, you saw, again, that, that Firebase application where you can choose a dark theme or a light theme. That's something that comes out of the box with material or Angular material. And then the other thing you can do is you can extend that further if you want to incorporate your corporate branding and your branding colors. You can easily do that as well. They allow you to set up your custom theme. If you want to check out more about it, I highly recommend that you go to the documentation website. They have some awesome material on how to use the components, how the API is structured, and they do update it regularly from what I've seen. Um, they also have some guides on how to get started in some of the more complex topics. So to get set up, what you want to do is, I typically just start a, a CLI project. Uh, and one thing that I add is the SAS flag on my project, which switches over my style sheets to SAS. This isn't a requirement, but this is something that I like to do. Angular Material uses SAS as well, so it makes it really easy to interact with the library. 
And I also love just how you can programmatically uh, use variables and mix-ins um, in your style sheet and how you, how you design your style sheet. I also like how you can nest um, your styles, uh, which makes, especially when you have a large application, it makes it really easy to write a lot less code. So check it out if, if you haven't. So there are four requirements in order to get the library set up and working. One is you need to install the Angular Material Library itself, as well as the CDK package, um, which is the foundation that I talked about earlier, and it, it requires uh, that for Angular Material to work. And the other thing is uh, your CLI project will come by default with the Angular Animations package installed. But I just want to point out that you do need this. Um, a lot of the, or several of the components use animations. For example, like a side nav might slide in real nicely. Um, you, you need Angular Animations for the user experience to kind of maximize on that um, and use those components. So the second thing is to import that animations uh, package and make sure, so that you can make sure that it works on your browser, uh, and then obviously add it to your root ng modules imports. And one thing that I want to call out is because the animations, uh, or Angular animations, uses the, the latest and greatest browser technology, you might want to add polyfills depending on what the browser models or, or um, versions you're targeting. The third thing that you need to include is the material icons font uh, reference in your index.html. Uh, it's, a, it's a set of consistent iconography that's provided by Google, so it follows the standards and the specifications of material design, and some of the components allow you to use the icons. You can certainly import your own icon library if you want as well, but this one works really nicely with Angular material. And then you also uh, need to add the Roboto font if that's the styling that you're going for. And then lastly, this is something that you need uh, in order for the Angular Material Library to work. Without this, it does not work. You need to select a theme. Uh, it comes with four preset themes with that pairing color that I talked about earlier, uh, philosophy. And in this case, this is just an indigo and pink example um, that you want to add. This will set all of the colors throughout your whole application. And then in order to use the components, um, it's fairly simple, and it follows the same structure uh, with a little bit of, of tweaks here and there, but generally this is the same pattern that you'll see. You need to import the mat component module uh, from the specific path and then add it to your root modules. Uh, you want to make sure that you import the specific component from the specific path. Uh, I know you can add the whole library if you want, but if you want to keep your bundle size small, uh, you want to do just what you need and only import that and not the whole thing. And then to use the actual component in your templates, each component has a particular selector. You just reference that like you would any HTML tag, throw that in, um, and then some of them come with uh, attribute options, um, maybe directives or specific methods that you can call on those components. So now the fun part. Uh, we're gonna get into the top five underappreciated Angular material components. These are the top five that I think kind of set a great example of what makes the library so awesome, so I wanted to highlight these five. Uh, you'll see that um, I'll use examples from the Angular documentation website and how we implemented them, uh, the components. Uh, so you'll see that so you can kind of see visually what, what that looks like. The first item I want to talk about is toolbar. It's very simple. All you have to do is import the mat toolbar module from the toolbar path. And then to use it, you just reference mat toolbar selector. This one does come with a color um, attribute that you can set to either primary or accent, depending on how you want it to look. Another really cool thing is that it supports multi-row, so if you want a toolbar that has, you know, one, uh, two, three, four, or whatever rows, you can easily add that by using the mat uh, toolbar row selector. The second um, item I want to call out is the buttons. So there is like five different button types that you can have if you just want button text. Um, it's really easy to, to do that as well, but I wanted to highlight these two. The first one is just the icon button. It, again, uses that material font, uh, that I, the material icon font that we talked about earlier. Uh, so the buttons are all material and wonderful and great. And then um, the fat button is the other one I really love. Users really enjoy this one. It's very visually appealing and kind of ties into UX. Uh, it has that awesome ripple effect when the user clicks on it. Um, really, really great, again, using those icons. So to use this, uh, if whatever button you want, you just import the mat button module from the button path. And then if you want to include icons, you, you need to include the mat icon module from the icon path. And then, of course, add it to your root ng modules as well. To use the, the button in your template, you just add a button, and then you choose whatever selected or directive text. For example, in this case, we have the mat icon button that I'm adding to it to tell the application that that's the, 
the button type that you want to show, and then inside of that, the mat icon selector for whatever, you know, using the text in this case, it's face um, that pulls from the material icon font. This one also comes with the color attribute, um, in this case set to primary, and then you also have the option for disabled. So disabled, it takes care of all of the styling for you, so it disables uh, the actual usability of the button and also changes the colors, et cetera. So there's, there's not a lot of thinking that you have to do in terms of the styles. Uh, number three is a side nav. Uh, so this is just a, a standard side nav like, like you see here. Uh, you import the mat side nav module from the side nav path, again, add it to your ng. Uh, modules root imports and then this one's a little bit more um, complex in terms of the template structure this one's similar to the cards uh, has a kind of a, a layered uh, template in this case you need the mat side nav container which is essentially your entire browser window and then it groups it or breaks it down into two different sections Woo! sorry guys <laughs> I speak with my hands. <laughs> All right, so the, the side nav will be one part of the browser, and then the content will be on the other side. The content obviously containing the majority, the bulk of your actual application, and then the side nav either being there or not being there. And then on the side nav, uh, you have the option of adding the, the nav list and then a list item for each individual item, item that you want to include in your side nav. And then the attribute for this one that makes it really exciting is you can set a mode. So if you don't want a static side nav, or yeah, side nav, then you can add a different ways of how that comes together. Um, so in this example, on the Angular documentation website, what we did was we chose side. So you can have options like it, having it overlay on top of your content. It can also push your content all the way over. But in this case, we chose side so that um, the content window automatically resizes so you can still see the documentation. So I get really excited is when you can combine the button with the side nav and getting this beautiful interaction where the side nav toggles. So there's three methods that are predefined with the side nav, which is open, close, and toggle. I'll talk about toggle because that's the one that we used. Um, and to use this, you just create a button like you would. Um, and then the, you have the side nav, and then you just add a template reference for the side nav. So in this case, I'm just keeping it simple. I'm calling it side nav so I don't forget. Um, and then what you do is you um, add a click event um, that calls that toggle method, and that's it. That's all you have to do, and you get this awesome side nav, which is very, very easy to do. Little code. This fourth example, uh, we did not implement in the documentation website, but I really, I really love this, and I think it, it's exemplary of, of the material, the Angular material library, which is the dialogue. It's essentially a pop-up modal, allows the user to get a pop-up, receive content, and possibly interact with it. Um, you import the Matt Dialog module, add it to your root folder. Um, and then in terms of the template, this one has the Matt Dialog content selector, and you have the option of adding that Matt Dialog actions selector. If you want a user to, for example, you know, have to acknowledge the, the pop-up, whether it's like an OK or cancel or whatever you want to add. And then the other thing you do need to do here is create a separate dialog component um, that you call and reference later. Um, that's where you, you add your template and, and what you want the content to be for that dialog. So to use this one, it's a little bit more complex, not, not a lot, but um, for this one, you do need to inject the service for the Matt dialog, and then you need to create a, a function to call later in your template, which calls the open method, returning the ref for that dialog component that you created. So in this case, you just, again, if we have a button, for example, and when a user clicks on the button, you just run the um, click event on calling that method. Simple enough. And then finally, uh, one of the last uh, component I want to highlight is the snack bar. So this uh, we used in the Angular documentation site to provide the user with a success message, if you will, for when they copy the code on, on the code block, for example, it'll say cop code copied to let them know that they did it correctly. And so to use this, you import the mat snack bar module, and you also have to pass it along the inject the service and the constructor so that you can use uh, the methods from it. And then the method you call on this, I, I called it snack time, but it's essentially the, the open method that comes with the snack bar. Um, there, it takes two parameters. One is the message that you want to show the user. So for example, in that case, it was code copied. And then you can also optionally pass it in an action. So that would be, again, having the user acknowledge the snack bar, whether it's like, yes, great, or OK, or, or cancel, or whatnot. That's not a requirement. You don't have to do that. We, we didn't include that in ours, because um, there was no need for a user to interact, but that's totally up to you. 
And then you can also add the duration to the snack bar, so how long it, it appears. And then to use it in your template, you just again add a click event to the button or whatever you want you know, to cause that uh, snack bar to appear, and you pass it in the message and that action text that you want um, for the user to click on. So again, super easy, this is what it looks like. Uh, one thing to note is that you can only show one snack bar at a time, so it's a, when, when the duration you know, lapses on the, that first uh, snack bar, then it'll show the second one if you have like multiple snack bars that you're wanting to use. Now the last item is a bonus item. So it's not necessarily a component, but I get really excited because what I love about the library is the option for customizing what it looks like. Uh, so Angular understands that you might not want to follow the visual language of material design, right? You need to use your own branding and colors. And so they really made it easy for you to customize your own theme. So I wanna walk you through what, what that would look like. So first to do that, you would create your own custom theme SAS file and then you import the theming styles SAS file into that from Material. And then you include the mat core just once. It's a mix in for all of the basic functions. And then you define your theme colors. So it's, the, the two are required right here, so it's the primary and accent. Um, for primary, you have an option to um, provide it with a light standard default and then a dark version that's used in animations and things like that. Um, and then you also have to provide it the accent. Again, that goes back to the, the philosophy of having that pair of colors um, throughout the application. And then lastly, you can optionally give it a worn color if you want. The default is set to red, so you don't have to do much thinking there, but if you want to change that, you certainly can. And then in order to, to use and consume the actual theme, you just pass in those colors into a mix-in again um, to your, you know, your, your theme name variable that you're defining, and then you pass in that theme, then that includes those colors into the Angular Material theme mix-in. And then the other really cool thing is that you're able to um, custom style specific components. So if you, if you don't wanna make the whole entire application different, if you just wanna say, you know, I only want my buttons to be red, right? So you can do that, you, you follow the same um, steps, you import the, the theming file, you define your colors however you want, and then instead of including the Angular Material theme mix in, you wanna include the matte core theme. So this one includes very standard and high level things like, for example, ripple effects. So you wanna do that instead of the, the big one, uh, the, the entire um, Angular Material theme mix in. And then from there on, you just uh, pass in your custom theme to the matte button theme, which would be that specific component or whatever specific component you want to um, style and change. And then lastly, uh, what you wanna do is in your main style sheet, then you reference in, you import your custom theme so that your application starts using it. Um, in this case, you wanna also remove your um, pre-built theme if that, you still have that there. So just make sure to only have one theme um, defined as such. Uh, the other tool that I just wanted to point out, I really enjoy this, this is from the Google Material, they put this together. If you're having you know, issues or, or trouble deciding what colors to use, they make recommendations based on what color you like, they'll provide like an accent color of what that would look like and give you some cool visual tools to, to help you decide. And lastly, I just wanted to say, um, working with Angular team has been really cool and I was able to contribute as or yeah, contribute as contributor <laughs> to the open source project. And I think that what makes Angular so awesome is the community and the fact that it is truly open source. Um, I think that if you feel passionate about anything that you've heard today, I highly recommend that you get involved in GitHub, you know, log an issue or submit a PR. Um, they truly do welcome that. And I, I really love that about the community. Thanks so much. <laughs>